First, let's give everybody a round of applause for making it here today, all of our young leaders, all of our representatives, all of our civic engagers. And good morning to everybody here. Good morning to all the young leaders in the audience. Let's understand why we're here. What's the purpose of us being here right now? It's for opportunity. And hello to all the allies that have come here from Opportunity Nation Summit to put forward a powerful and unified plan to expand opportunity for young people across our nation. I want to welcome you all to the National Young Leaders Town Hall. My name is Michael Parker, a proud graduate of Youth Build East Harlem, the first Youth Build program in the country. Thank you. I stand before you here a proud father of three young boys. Yes, I have been busy. And <laughs> a proud graduate of the AmeriCorps program where I personally completed over 1,700 community service hours in our community program. <laughs> and most importantly, an active and model citizen in my East Harlem community, working in youth action programs and homes as a transitional coordinator and case manager. We are here from many organizations, from Year Up to Youth Build USA, Public Allies, Core Network, National Congress of Na Native Americans, Youth Leadership Institute, Job for the Futures, and many other important and prominent organizations. Today you'll be speaking with more than, today we'll be speaking for more than 6.7 million young people that are disadvantaged in our communities. Too many times we're being called the voices of the voiceless, and I believe that today we'll have the opportunity to speak for all these young people and speak on their behalf and speak about their opportunities and what we need is very important. Diamond? Good morning, everyone. My name is Diamond Jimenez. I'm a graduate of Europe, New York City, class of January 2011. Today I'm proud to say I am a help desk administrator at Tower Research Capital for two years. I'm starting back my college education, and I'm here with all of you showing that there is an opportunity, not just for one, but all of us. And basically, what that means is, this gives hope to our future leaders. Here at Opportunity Nation, we have an amazing chance to really learn from all of our experts and political leaders about the state of opportunity in America. We've looked at the Opportunity Index, which proves, using data, what all of us young leaders know from our life experiences. Opportunity is different depending on which zip code we are born into. Now we're going to bring some different type of data to the table. We are going to make the real tremendous assets that flow to this nation when people invest in us and every young person in this country, regardless of your zip code. This is the moment for everyone to hear our voices of all you young leaders in this room. And when I mean all, I mean each and every one of you. We ask that all of our allies, please sit back, relax, and take the next 30 minutes to really listen to what we have to say. Our shared goal for the Opportunity Nation plan is to increase opportunity score in all states by 10% in 10 years. The truth is that this goal is easily, and when I say easily, I mean easily within reach. We already know as young leaders what works and what doesn't work from our own experiences. So we want to hear from all of the young leaders in the audience who have struggled to grab a piece of this American pie, a pie that they promised to us. Some might say that they owe it to us. And most of all, that we come together to degree and discuss what possibly works. We're gonna kick off this open mic conversation among young people with two of our peers up here on stage. But before we do that, we wanna hear from each and every one of you. Unfortunately, we won't have the time to hear from each and every one of you. I truly wish we could, but instead I ask that every young leader in the audience, now's the time, take out your cell phone, your tablets, your iPods, your iPads, and text, what works? What is the most important pathway to opportunities for young people? And now, it is my pleasure to introduce a fellow mentor, a friend, and a fellow youth build leader from Los Angeles, California, Ellie Flores. So uh, I come here today representing uh, Youth Build, uh, but beyond that, representing a vision and an idea for what real youth leadership development is and a real opportunity and success really means. Um, but along with that, I'm not alone. As you heard already, I have my brothers and my sisters here from 
from Youth Built, right? And uh, so it's only fair that I introduce to you, to you some of them as well, um, because I feel like what I'm saying is like a collective voice, right? So we have Julia Ramirez, who is in a room, master's degrees, uh, does HIV testing and life education in Florida. Beyond that, he is a master facilitator and a leadership developer. Uh, Karima Barr relocated to Mississippi after Hurricane Katrina to help the rebuilding efforts. Now she's back to Illinois, her home, uh, and works at the Youth Build program. Be sweet, years and years of experience in youth development. Along with that, she is also a fellow Public Allies alumni, along with me. So, so I know Public Allies is in the house too. So, um, and then you got me, right? You got Ellie Flores, and I just refer to myself as a social entrepreneur. And uh, these examples are, are stuff, are things that, what opportunities can do for someone, right? And so with all that said, I want to ask you though, who deserves opportunities? Is it a right? And is it a privilege? And what opportunities am I referring to? The opportunity to an adequate education, post-secondary education, an opportunity to a livable wage job? What about an opportunity at leadership? If you've had good grades in school, and have done well in college, and have had make, made great decisions throughout your life, then yes, you deserve an opportunity at success. But that wasn't necessarily my case. And if you look around the room, and you speak to youth field graduates here, that wasn't necessarily their case either. Does a young lady who come from the foster care system and dealt with abuse all her life deserve an opportunity at success? Does a young man who was, formerly, who was a formal gang member deserve an opportunity at success? What about someone who has been incarcerated before? Do they deserve an opportunity at success? In many cases, I hear, well, these people reap what they sow. Well, you have to tie up your bootstraps, stop complaining, and work harder. Or maybe you work better with your hands than you do with your brain. Yeah, these things may sound harsh, but these things are stuff that we're hearing every single day. And our young people right now are hearing every single day. It seems that Many, many of us and many of these individuals are marginalized and given the smallest amount of resources, and people like me can't help but think that success was not meant for me. Well, someone gave me an opportunity of success, and I took it and I ran with it. And I can stand here as Ali Flores, and I can stand here as the community organizer. I can stand here as the founder of an organization. I can stand here as the outreach court manager for Great Alternatives. I can stand here as whoever I want to stand here as, and you nor no one else can refer to me as anything otherwise. Not a dropout, not the adjudicated, not the at risk, not the gang member, not the one who almost made it. And please do not refer to me as the future. I hate being told I'm the future because I'm the now. Now, how is my success possible? Well, it, it really takes a lot of folks to talk about what opportunity really means, right? And then there has to be an investment. So first there was an investment put forth by individuals that believed that success was a right. So youth build invest, the investment of youth build in us was far beyond monetary. It came with adequate education, came with support and real case management, came with expectations at greatness, came with leadership opportunities, and came with a space that empowered us to find who we really are and our actual voice. Every young person across the country constantly talks to elected officials about making sure that programs like youth build continue to be funded because we know what an opportunity can mean. And many times it's the difference between freedom and incarceration. It's the difference between happiness and bitterness, right? It's the difference between life and death. I heard this quote once, which was pretty interesting. It says, when one door shuts, one door opens. And then I thought that quote was really good, but then I couldn't help but ask myself, what if there's no doors open in the first place? Right? Then what happens, right? There's little doors open for success, right? Yet in the hood, we have an overabundance of police in this area versus that area, an overabundance of policies that make our situation worse, an overabundance of incarceration facilities, and very few places for education, right? So that being said, I applaud you uh, for being here today and being the champion for opportunities because it takes a lot of guts, it takes a lot of passion, 
And it takes a lot of will to say opportunity is not a privilege. Opportunity is a right. So no matter what my economic background, educational background, criminal background, or simply my ethnic background, everyone who wants an opportunity has a right to an opportunity, and we who have received the opportunity need to continue to open those doors for those who have not. Thank you. Thank you, Eli. I want to say again, thank you, Eli. That was wonderful. And actually, what you guys are writing up there is wonderful as well. Keep that up. But now to keep us moving, I'm proud to introduce my friend and fellow alum from Europe and Boston, someone who has a real strong, vibrant personality, Greg Walton. My name is Gregory Walton and I'm a graduate of the Europe program from Boston, January 2007. I was raised by a single mother, dealing with her own issues of drug addiction, which meant I spent a bunch of my childhood bouncing around. I went through the foster care system, living with other family members, et cetera, and at 13, I had to deal with the reality that my younger sisters were to be adopted, and I may never see them again. Till this day, I've only been able to find one of them. By 17, I was on my own, still very immature, lacking guidance, support, confidence, and most of all, love. My life growing up was similar to many young black men in this country, and it's sad. Sure, I wasn't all bad, and I actually accomplished a few things. I was the first to graduate from high school in my immediate family and went off to college, but I still lacked direction and focus on what was important. It wasn't until I hit a real low point and experienced time in prison, separated away from my family, friends, and loved ones that I got serious about my life and started to reach out to positive people for help. That's when I was introduced to the Year Up program where I was able to work on myself and develop my skills while also challenging myself to grow in new ways. Suddenly, I was surrounded by other young people on this same journey, similar obstacles to overcome, but also the similar drive to want more for themselves, their family, and their communities. Europe became my newfound network and the foundation that helped catapult me to new heights. What I needed was an opportunity, and they gave me one. I now, sit bef I now stand before you, a 27-year-old married man, a proud father, a homeowner, an employee at one of the world's most prestigious, prestigious educational institutions, MIT. and the first alum of the Year Up program to join its national board of directors. Thank you. The feeling of coming to my home after a long day at work, seeing my son play in his room and cooking with my wife in our kitchen is unbelievable. But this isn't about me. This is about the millions of young adults in this country that need that same opportunity that I got. And I'm here to tell you all today, it's my lifelong mission to make that happen. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. And now we want to hear from all of you, young leaders out here in the audience, from your own life experiences. What works? What opens pathways for opportunity? So I think I will. Hi, everyone. My name is Diana Carrillo, and I have been working in Conservation Corp North Bay in California for two years. Here, we work and study at the same time. We are helping protect the environment, and have a better and safe community. We also have the opportunity to get an education. Young people like me can learn English as a second language and get support to get our high school diplomas. We earn college scholarships 
and get help to continue our education through attending college. To me, be part of this project is a great satisfaction because when I started at CCMB, I could not speak English. At CCMB, I learned English, I got my GED, and I am working to get in my high school diploma. <laughs> and I will attend college. Here, I have the opportunity to be a better person, uh, be a good example for my daughter. Conservation Corner Bay is the place that young people need to have a better future. Thank you. Okay, so this gets good. Do I have two people that would like to answer this question as well from this area right here, or should I pick randomly? Oh, okay, I'll, I'll pick randomly. That's your mic. <laughs> Do you remember the question? Can you repeat the question? <laughs> Can you repeat the question, Helen? The question is, sir, what works, what opens pathways for opportunity? More exposure to opportunity itself, I think. Um, I'm coming from Chicago, uh, even though we are a new class. Yeah, so I'm class two alumni, but you know, I think the youth just need more exposure. You know, it's a lot of people who don't know about Europe, you know, and it's a definitely a blessing in disguise at the same time. You know, I'm, I work school, own uh, apartment, two cars, so it's definitely a blessing to be here. So that's what I think we need, more exposure to it, you know. We need to spread the word and have more summits and stuff like this, just do things just like this every year, you know, that's what I think. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, everybody. How you doing? My name is B Sweet. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm with my Youth Build family. Also a graduate of Public Allies LA, PA in the house. So I just, I just want to share authentically that uh, words do not create change. Okay, we could stand here and we could say a good game and we, you know, we on TV and all that, but words do not create change. Action does. That's right. Okay. <laughs> Education does not create change. Education does not create change. It helps, but it doesn't create change. People authentically, honestly, lovingly, Connecting with, connecting in peace and in partnership creates change, okay? Listening to one another, embracing one another, allowing the true self to be seen and heard uh, creates change. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is David Hernandez uh, from Los Angeles, California. Um, what works, uh, I'll tell you what works for me, or had, has worked for me, is definitely a quality education. Uh, just a little bit about myself. I'm definitely working class. My parents are blue collar. Um, son of a bus boy, and my mo mother used to be a former night custodian. And if it wasn't for a quality education, I wouldn't be here today. If it wasn't for quality teachers that I had in my life, I wouldn't be here today. And I know we all talk about hard work and individual initiative, and that's amazing because I think the American dream still exists. Uh, however, we do have to acknowledge that it's opportunity that opens those doors and breaks those barriers. Uh, and it's one of the reasons why I chose to be a Teach for America Corps member, and I'll be teaching in Los Angeles next year, 2013. So quality education. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Give them all a round of applause for speaking their opinions and just being very modest about it. Thank you. Now we want to shift the question a little bit. We're not youth anymore. We're young leaders and active citizens. 
late 20s, early 30s, holding down full-time jobs, looking for work. And a funny thing happened to me yesterday. I was talking to my son on the phone yesterday after going through a multitude of rehearsals and, and conversations yesterday. And my son says, Daddy, I knew you were sick, so I left your asthma pump in your suitcase yesterday. In East Harlem, the asthma rate is extremely high. And the medication costs extremely high as well. Between me and my three sons, we have to share one asthma pump between the four of us. And it really bothered me yesterday that, first I enjoyed it and I, and I was appreciative that he actually put his asthma inhaler in my suitcase. But then coming here today, I said, this is not the America that they promised us. This is not the challenges that they said that we was gonna face. They did not tell us that when we went to school and we were taxpaying citizens, that I would have to choose between buying food for my family or paying for medication for myself and my children. So those are the challenges that I'm facing here today. And the questions that I ask you guys is, what are the challenges that you guys face here today? We've all left huge burdens back at home to be here, to represent for many voices. So I would like to select two people, and Diamond will select two people of, what are your challenges facing here today? And Jamea, just so you know, because I know you're watching, Daddy has an asthma pump. So, so can I have two people? Anyone want to volunteer? I'll take you with the blue shirt. Ladies first. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Annika. I'm from Europe, New York. Graduated in 09. We face a lot of challenges. And like we heard on the panel too, it starts early in education. It starts with extracurricular activities. Our youth are not getting that. Our children are not getting that. The school zones, because of the zip codes we live in, we can't get to those better schools. Our children can't get all those programs and all the extras that probably well-off families always get. And that's what we need in our school zones for our schools to offer our children what they need to, be, to, see, to succeed in this life and to succeed and have, be on this stage. So we don't have to have this opportunity to buy. We can eliminate all these programs right here if we do this, start early. Thank you. Going. I'm Shakir from uh, Youthville, Newark. YB, we in here. Uh, the question was, uh, what challenges are we facing? I think education discrimination is basically what it is. You know, that's the only way we can move forward is if everybody is educated in a fashion to as though you know that with that knowledge you can do better. You can change because you know what you know to be true. The, with the, with the, um, the zip codes being what they are, I'm a little nervous you guys, but bear with me. Um, with the zip codes being what they are, and it's like education based on that. Uh, now we have that education, like we know that. So we can take that education with us and go back and enlighten other people so that you don't have to be ignorant to the fact anymore. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Um, my name is William Tarter, and I'm the president of the Cleveland Young Professional Senate. We're a civic engagement organization for young professionals in the greater Cleveland area. And when I think about the challenges that exist among young people, uh, it comes down to this. Find an example and be an example. Find an example you need to have elders, and you need to have people who are quick to teach. And what we need to do as young people is be swift to hear. To be swift to hear and swift to learn. So the challenge for us is to be open to the wisdom and experience of people that have gone before us. And just as important, be willing to teach yourself and to be an example to the people who are coming behind you. Someone is always watching. Someone is always looking to you as an example. And you never know, the people that you look up to and be an example, people could one day 
be looking at you to be their example. Thank you. Do we have time for one more? Hi, my name is Brianne Alexander. I'm from Saginaw, Michigan, and I'm a AmeriCorps member. Placed at Grand Rapids Community Foundation. And I would say the main thing that we need are more opportunities for young people to experience experiential learning in the classroom through service learning and through job training programs that allows them to see things that they are not typically exposed to. We need to give young people and be willing to take chances on young people being exposed to boardroom experiences. Place young, young people on your boards, allow them to voice their opinions, give them the opportunity, and we're gonna use that word a lot, but give them the opportunity to experience things and situations that you may not think that they're ready for, but I can guarantee you, and every young person out here can guarantee you, they're ready to step up, they're ready to take a challenge, they're ready to make a stand, and they'll make a difference. Simon, what challenges are you facing? Huh? What challenges are you facing? Well, my challenges aren't like everyone else's, but you can relate. Basically, I say a challenge for me is basically staying mo motivated in my college studies, particularly as I balance school and work. It's not easy to find time for classes and homework, but I also have to stay focused on my studies. I find like everything so interesting from every major. I think I just want to know it all, so that basically I can tell everybody about it and always have something to steer a conversation. But I basically learned to stay focused on just achieving that degree. No matter what it's in, as long as I have one, I have something that can open the door for me. So basically my main focus is just completing my degree with something, no matter what it is. It could be cooking, it could be literature. As long as I have something, it's gonna work. So that's, that's my challenge. Well, I would like to thank everybody here for opening their hearts, sharing their insights, letting us in on experiences, I wish we had time to hear from each and every one of us right now.